Parker, uh, who's with the Washington Post, um, <coughs> wrote this column today. And <clears throat> when these people just gonna realize <coughs> that these ideas are stupid, this is the headline of her piece. For the country's sake, Vice President Harris should step aside. Uh, Kathleen Parker, for me, ain't the brightest bulb in a dark, dark room. <laughs> but at some point, uh, Diambi, when are these mm-hmm. dumbasses going to realize, one, she ain't going nowhere, Biden ain't going nowhere, she ain't <laughs> going nowhere, and if the Democrats tried to replace Kamala Harris, they are guaranteeing they're going to lose in November. I just oh, think that I just think these these columns and these discussions are literally some of the dumbest stuff I've ever heard. Well, listen, I just think it's just so cavalier um, how people feel like they can just tell a black woman what she ought to do, that she should not aspire to be anything. She shouldn't have ambition. She should step aside because certainly the same thing was said to her um, when they were running the first time that she shouldn't be the pick, that she should, you know, Go to be a Supreme Court justice. Do something else. Don't do this. And so I think this this is just the latest in a litany of efforts to um, try to uh, tell this woman, this black woman, what she ought to be doing. And listen, these people might as well just kick rocks with open toe shoes because she's not doing any of the above. And I think, as you said, Roland, what would this mean for the Democratic Party when you talk about black women and their voter turnout? Even the ones who might not be wild about Kamala Harris would definitely read this in a in all the negative light and they would get all the smoke come November from black women um, in particular and this for is, trying this move. This and, is ridiculous. And this is what I just really crack up here, uh, Michael and Matt. Go to my iPad. This is what she actually puts in the lead. The Democratic Party's indulgence of identity politics has proved successful in building a diverse organization, but its strategy of courting and pandering to minority voters is the <laughs> road to ruin. So she goes, in 2020, Joe Biden's promise to tap a woman as his vice president, along with Representative James E. Clyburn's election-altering endorsement in South Carolina, paved Biden's way to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. His history-making selection of the telegenic Kamala D. Harris might prove to be his downfall in 2024, and he has enough fall-downs to make voters worry. Harris's resume was impressive. A former California Attorney General, blah, 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 blah. But her evolving beliefs undercut that appeal, blah, 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 blah. Here's what I just I find to be real funny, Michael. They put identity politics in the cover. I'm sorry. Raise your hand if you were around for the 2008 presidential election. Do y'all recall how many people said Obama needed to pick a white guy? Does anybody remember when they said Obama needed to pick a white man who could talk to white folks in the Rust Belt? Do y'all remember when they said Obama should pick a white man with foreign policy experience because he didn't have any? And he picked Joe Biden. See, I love it when white people like Kathleen Parker Act like identity politics ain't never happened with white people. It happens all the time. Whiteness is an identity, and whiteness has always been in identity politics. Yeah, yes, it has, Roland. Uh, You know, Roland, this goes back to the conversation we had back on Friday, February 23rd, when you interviewed uh, Jennifer Rubin uh, about her uh, op-ed in The Washington Post dealing with uh, Kamala Harris being uh, an asset, uh, uh, undervalued or underused asset to uh, President Biden. And we talked about the accomplishments of uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, whether it's the uh, having uh, tiebreak having a record number of tie-breaking votes, uh, presiding over the Senate, whether it's getting the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan uh, passed, because if it had not been for her tie-breaking vote in the Senate, it would not have passed, or her tie-breaking vote when it came to uh, passing the Inflation Reduction Act that no Republicans in the Senate voted for, or presiding over the um, first ever um, 
Office of, of, gun, of, of Gun Violence Reduction, et cetera. So we talked about in that segment how uh, people fear her being becoming president in 2028. People, people fear that. They see her as a threat. So they're writing all these hit pieces on her, and these hit pieces, these BS hit pieces, continue. So, um, you know, uh, I, I'm not that fr- I've probably read stuff by Kathleen Parker in the past because I read the Washington Post every day. But you're going to continue to have these unqualified white people putting this nonsense out. Uh, 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 against Vice President Kamala Harris. So we need to fight back and uh, vote for uh, Biden-Harris in 2024, crush the MAGA Republicans, crush Donald Trump, and uh, continue to fight for policies that are good for African-Americans and policies that are good for African-Americans are good for America in general. Uh, And this is the thing that I crack up here, Matt. She goes... um Harris in her campaign in December 2019, citing a lack of financial resources. Next thing we knew, she was moving to the Naval Observatory. She was a colossal failure as borders are, a position she held briefly and otherwise seemed to have gone undercover. Kathleen, are you that dumb? Are you that dumb? She writes, whatever the reason, it has seemed that Harris's role was to be quiet, lest she embarrass her boss with her sometimes inane rambling remarks and a laugh that erupts from nowhere about nothing obvious to others. I do, however, relish the thought of her face to face with Vladimir Putin and suddenly cackling at a linchpin moment during nuclear arms discussions. Now, so let me go ahead and unpack this. First of all, uh, this is uh, an insulting and revolting column from um, a rather unremarkable white woman. Yep. <laughs> Let's just be clear. Mm-hmm. Kathleen, do you remember? Because I was there. When CNN picked you and Elliot Spitzer to host the show, that was one of the most awful shows I have ever witnessed. And that decision led to CNN firing John Klein as president of CNN US. You were horrible. Like, mm, not kind of horrible. You absolutely sucked. Two, You have to suck as a columnist because for you to suggest that she's been quiet is interesting because she was literally just overseas meeting with foreign leaders. She's traveled the world, has been engaged in public policy. See, this is what happens, Matt. This is how mainstream media works. So what they do is they establish a narrative And it's, oh, she's awful. She's been doing nothing. She's been quiet. I've even heard some black people with media platforms parrot this. Oh, they've been hiding her. Well, damn, if they've been hiding her, they've been doing an awful job of hiding her. And second, (laughs) here's the other deal. Ain't don't nobody pay attention to the vice president. Obama never put Biden out as much as he does Harris. This is the crap that you keep seeing because it is all about how do we keep tearing her down and and to what Michael said, continue to reinforce the narrative that she's awful. And so what do you see right here? She writes in here, oh, um, Every honest person knows he's not in top form. A recent New York Times poll found that 73 percent of registered voters believe Biden is too old and blah, 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 blah. And then and then she goes, oh, at the start of Biden's term, I was pulling for Harris to do well. She had pizzazz and a reputation for being a tough prosecutor. She had moxie and swagger and she leaned centrist. There was reason for hope, blah, 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 and all this sort of nonsense. Her performance as second in command has been disappointing. To say the least, Americans have taken note. No, Kathleen. They've taken note because people like you keep writing the bullshit lies and it creates the narrative that she's been missing in action and she's horrible when again. Oh, let's see. Biden under Obama. First of all, what the hell did Mike Pence do under Trump? (laughs) What the hell? Okay, Cheney, we know the kind of power he had because Bush was portrayed as being stupid. What the hell do you anybody remember? Really, the only thing that I can remember that Al Gore did is uh, 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 
Clinton's vice president was go on David Letterman's show and and uh, and uh, bust an ashtray to show how uh, uh, to show how um, uh, government was ru- ru- running inefficiently. Let's see here. I have no idea what the <laughs> hell Dan Quayle did. I do not remember what the hell George H. W. Bush did in eight years under Reagan. Anybody can remember? Okay. Who the hell was Carter's vice president? Oh, damn, that's right. That was Mondale. Let's go before that. Who the hell was Nixon's vice president? Ford. Uh, Spiro T. Agnew. Well, we know he resigned because he got indicted. Spiro T. Agnew, he got indicted. (laughs) Okay, go before that. Uh, Who's LBJ's vice president? Was it Humphrey? Uh, yeah, I think it was. Uh, yeah, it, I think it was Humphrey. Yeah. What can, can anybody Humphrey cite for me president. the accomplishments of Hubert Humphrey as vice president? Before that, here you had LBJ, who was a hey. Senate Majority Leader, and JFK didn't call upon him at all. Okay, before that, who the hell was Eisenhower's vice president? Nixon. Mm-hmm. What did he do? Can't remember. <laughs> before that. Who was Truman's vice president? I don't Um, even remember. Barkley. Who? (laughs) I just remember Charles Barkley. No, I just Uh, hold on, (laughs) y'all. I'm being straight. Yeah, Harry. Hey, but I remember Barkley. Truman's talked about a lot. (laughs) Harry Truman's VP. Oh, I I am not lying, y'all. I did not know. Who the hell this is? His name was Alvin William Barkley. Mm-hmm. I literally, this is no lie. Matt Lab, I am, I'm not, y'all, I, y'all, I am not lying. I know, pa- I literally did not know who the hell Harry Truman's vice president was. Okay, before Truman, FDR, Truman was FDR's vice president. That's how Truman became president when FDR died. FDR died, I, right. <laughs> people so, on, so this people is how this is how dumb president. This is how dumb all of this is, Matt. They somehow want to act like that that Vice President Kamala Harris is just so. Oh my God! In the in the history of vice presidents, but God, she's so awful. Vice presidents have one job mm-hmm. to Force sit the there. And hope nothing happens to the president. <laughs> and preside over the Senate. Okay, fine. Preside over the Senate. But I'm, I'm just being... Uh, but they don't even preside over the Senate. Well, yeah, you know... Uh, no, they cast, don't. Uh, tie-breaking votes in the... Tie, cast tie-breaking votes in the That's Senate. it. So, so the yeah. VP don't preside over the Senate. Preside over right. the Senate means she pack a lunch and go to the Senate every day right. and preside... No, <laughs> she doesn't. She only goes to the Senate... When it's time it's to time break time. a vote, that's oh, it. Right. That's the, that's the job of the vice president. But this is what they do, and this Matt, I believe, is why the polling numbers are what they are because of nonsensical columns like what Kathleen Parker has written. Go ahead. The goalpost always moves when it's a black person kicking the field goal. We know that 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 has been shown to us since time immemorial. We see it in every iteration of any conversation about a black person. I mean, even in this very broadcast, look back to Fonnie Willis and the scrutiny that she got being a black woman in that position. We know this to be true. And what I thought was particularly problematic about the, the, the snippets you showed is words matter. I mean, she tried to reduce Vice President uh, Harris to quote being telegenic, which means she looks good on TV. Not that she was in the Senate, not that she was the attorney general of the largest state in the country, not that she was known to be an intrepid prosecutor, not any of the things that even if people don't like her, they can't say objectively qualified her for this position. But instead she's quote telegenic and her quote ramblings are inane. Those are the kinds of things you say when you want clickbait, not when you're doing an actual appraisal of a job that doesn't really have any kind of job description. That's what makes this so problematic. It's a hit piece because you're attacking a person for apparently not meeting the metrics of a job where there are no metrics. 
So how do you say you're failing at something where we have no rubric upon which to determine whether you're failing? That is because you don't like the person in the post, and that's because you want to attack her as a woman, as a black woman, and as someone who is a part of this administration. So I think you've already covered it very robustly, but this is what we know to be the, the case. The goalposts always move when a black person is kicking the field goal. So let me just close this out very simply with this right here. To Kathleen Parker, you have the audacity to talk about identity politics. That's what you are. You're a white woman who's a columnist with the Post who literally isn't interesting. You're a failure on television. That's you. You were awful. And your column is equally awful. And I'm still trying to figure out who the hell Alban Barkley is. All right. For this 10 week online history course, go to our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, okay? There's a 10-week online history course called Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade with a Didn't Teach You in School. I teach the class on uh, Saturdays, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our next class, uh, next classes are Saturday, March 9th, Saturday, March 16th, March 23rd, and March 30th, okay? And then we have a few more classes after that. The class is on sale, $80, regularly $130. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch this anytime. So even after the course is over with, you can go back and watch the entire class, okay? And we, we, instead of 10 sessions, we're going to do at least 11, possibly 12. The course outline, the lesson plans for all uh, 10 classes or 10 plus classes are laid out here. And I'll go through and update it uh, periodically because we, we add a few additional subjects. But we take you through our history. We deal with thousands of years of history, what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. So we deal with archaeological discovery that have um, been uh, have come out in the last uh, 10, 20. So uh, we deal with uh, Egypt on the Potomac and how the layout of Washington, D.C. is based upon by ancient African principles coming out of uh, uh, ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt. Kemet, one of the original names for Egypt, meaning land of the blacks. Um, we look at the African origins of Star Wars and the Saurian drama. Uh, there's an excerpt of an interview that I did with Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene. Uh, that where we look at this information, we uh, look at um, the uh, Hannibal Barca and the Punic Wars, okay? And especially the Battle of Kanai, 216 BC. We look at Hannibal crossing the Alps, um, uh, crossing the Pyrenees, 219 BC, but the Battle of Kanai, 216 BC. Uh, the Battle of Zama, 202 BC, where Hannibal Barca is defeated by Publius Cornelius Scipio. And Publius Cornelius Scipio takes the surname Africanus after he defeats Hannibal Barca at the Battle of Zama in 202 BC. Af Africa is not named after a Roman general. The Roman general took the surname Africanus after he defeated uh, Hannibal Barca. And we know that um, Africanus is Latin meaning belonging to Africa. It's Latin meaning belonging to Africa. We look at the 800-year uh, occupation of the Europe's uh, of the Africans known as the Moors, who take the teachings from the Nile Valley region of Africa into Europe. And this is going to bring Europe out of the Dark Ages. OK, and we see the rise of Spanish conquest. We look at Christopher Columbus and Columbus is essential to the uh, expansion of the transatlantic slave trade and the exploitation of indigenous people and the exploitation of African people also. OK, so we go through and look at this uh, history chronologically. We also look at the fake Willie Lynch letter 1712. Willie Lynch never historically existed. Uh, I wish we would just throw the Willie Lynch letter in the garbage can where it belongs. It's. Uh, a historical. Uh, there, there are words in the Willie Lynch letter that didn't even exist in uh, the early 1700s. Okay, the sentence, the sentence structure, the syntax is not what they uh, is not coming from uh, England. That's uh, a 20th century uh, sentence structure, and there are words from the 20th century from the um, industrial Revolution and the automotive industry, things like that, that are in that letter. That was written about 1970 by Dr. Kwabina Ashanti, 
uh, who's come out and admitted he wrote the Willie Lynch letter and is Professor Manu and Pim, who I'll be interviewing later this month, who exposed Dr. Kwabina Shanti as the author of the Willie Lynch letter. It's, 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 it's a fraud. Uh, Dr. Kwabina Shanti meant well, but it's, I think it's done more harm good. Okay, so uh, you can register for that course at our website, uh, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, all right, let's continue here. And I posted the information here in the thread of the broadcast um, as well. You can also email us through the website. If you have any questions right here, where it says contact uh, the African History Network, you can email us through the website uh, right there. Uh, you can email us also, okay? And if you wanna support us through uh, PayPal or Cash App, uh, let's see, we have a preview of the class here and we have information for the African History Network show. Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we broadcast on uh, my social media platforms. And we have our audio podcast on uh, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Castbox, Castbox, FM Player, TuneIn. It's about nine different audio podcast platforms. Okay. And you can support us also through PayPal and Cash App right here. Uh, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign, the AHN app. Click on the link here. Takes us, takes you to to our uh, Cash App uh, QR code. And I had to create this graphic because some people set up fake African History Network Cash App accounts. So these other ones out here are fake ones. Our tag is dollar sign the A H N show S H O W, and it's like, oh, it may show my picture when you go to it also. But we have uh, you click here on the link. We have the uh, actual QR code, and this is our. Uh, you can support us through PayPal also, paypal.me 